What's up, y'all? I uh, hope y'all are doing well. Um, been out having a lot of fun on the new bike, and I wanted to do a review of it. Been on it for about a month now, and uh, it's a bike that I kind of don't want to get off of. I just keep riding and riding and riding. Uh, I'll plan like a 30-mile ride or something like that, and next thing you know, it turns into 50 miles. Uh, so it's a very easy r bike to ride and a very comfortable bike uh, for the type of bike it is. So the new bike that I've got is the new 2023 Trek Amanda SL6 Pro with DI2, 105D02 on it. And um, having an electric kind of bike is pretty, pretty nice. Or the electric shifting on it is really nice. A lot of nice features on there um, uh, to make riding a lot smoother and uh, more enjoyable. But it's been a blast so far. So what does SL6 Pro di2 mean um the amada series comes in uh five six seven and uh each one has a different component on there or group set on there on this one it's the new 105 uh di2 um electronic shifting by shimano uh, so it's the entry into electronic shifting which has only been out several six or seven months or so um, the Pro in the Amanda series means that it comes with carbon wheels on here. Um, on the SL5, it won't have the carbon wheels and it'll be on just 105, on, uh, 105 components on there. So this one means it's got a little extras on there that makes it a more efficient kind of bike. Um, in the 56 frame, it actually weighs in about 18.19 uh, pounds or 8.25 grams or kilograms uh, for a bike uh, of carbon fiber uh, frame. Now, what is the Amanda? The Amanda in the Trek lineup is the lightweight racer, kind of built for climbing, um, but a very speedy bike uh, compared to the um, Madone, which is now a very lightweight race bike as well, and the Damani being more the endurance bike. So this is the race bike. Um, um, that a lot of pros use on the pro pelotons and pro races and stuff. Uh, this is the SL version, so it's the OCLV 500 carbon, not the 800 carbon, which comes on the SLR. Dials it up quite a bit when you move into that. Uh, when you get into that range and the top range of the SLR uh, series for the Amanda, you get down to about 14 pounds on that frame set, uh, which is really, really light and makes it a very agile, quick, quick bike. But this is the SL series coming in at 18 pounds. Um, this B54, what I'm riding now, um, probably around that 18 pound mark. Um, I have done an upgrade just recently. I got the uh, Pirelli, um, I forgot what type of material it is, but they're new tubes they just came out with. Uh, the stock tube that come in here from Bontrager weigh in about 120 grams uh, per tire. Uh, and the Pirelli tubes that I've got uh, installed now come in at 35 grams. So shaving almost close to 200 grams off the bike, and which today was my first ride on those, uh, and can definitely feel a big difference just in the rotational weight, but how twitchy or we'd say almost unstable the bike fails uh definitely taken off the line taking off on the line um had made it made a significant difference on uh with the tubes in there it was seemed like the bike was just ready to roll that's what's kind of nice with this setup that it's just kind of ready to move um when you put down the power so what i love most about this bike uh, it's rapid. It's really quick. I love it. Uh, it does take me back to the days when I had my felt uh, before my crash and the 54 that I was riding there. An all aluminum, really lightweight bike um, that I could just throw the power at it and it would not hesitate to launch uh, to speed away and have fun. Um, this does come with a compact, which means it's a 50 chain ring up front and a 34 behind. Um, I've maxed this out. Um, there, the uh, felt that I had had a 53 on it with a 10 in the back as well, so I was able to get up to 35, 37 miles an hour without problem. 
this, I kind of max out at maybe 31 at a real high cadence. 37 is probably the fastest I've got on it, but I was working crazy hard to get that on a really nice downhill with a really nice tailwind. So um, the other upgrade that I'm going to do is get either, if I can find a 53, it'd be perfect. It's the really in-between gearing that I'd really like to have, but it seems like Shimano may not be producing this anymore or uh, making that range anymore, but they do a 52, which is the next step up from this. The after that is a 54. So I'm kind of on the fence. Do I really want to push it, go to a 54, move my gears way up top um, to where the chain line isn't really efficient? Or do I go to a 52, just kind of keep it low and still be able to top out maybe 36, 37 miles an hour on it? But one of the other big upgrades that I need to do to it because it's just uh, I get to the top of um, that 11 and I'm just spinning. I'm clicking. I'm looking for my gears. I'm like, I need more gears because I, I know I can do more, push more uh, through that. But that is one of the big upgrades that I need to do to this. Um, the bike is light for what it is, especially making some other adjustments and things I'm going to do. Hopefully I can get it down maybe into the 16 pound range um, and just make it a little more efficient than uh, what it is now. But I definitely love it. I went with this one because I love the color. I, I wanted something bright um, and that stood out and uh, made people go, hey, check that, check out that awesome bike. So uh, that's why I did go to this version instead of going up to another one. Um, Really nothing to hate about it. This is the uh, H15 geometry, so it is a race geometry. It does pitch you forward a little more. Um, I have noticed when I'm riding, I'm kind of sliding back onto the edge of the hoods instead of riding up front on the hoods. And so I do need to bring stem back, uh, maybe 10 mil. So this comes with a 90. I'm going to get an 80 uh, just to bring the bars back to me so I'm in a little more comfortable position. Um, but done 100 miles on it already uh, with one of our rides and it's been like a pretty comfortable bike had no issues fatigue or anything like that afterwards um, and i'm able to produce great power on it um, from um, without uh, fatiguing pretty quick uh, as i used to on like the checkpoint or anything um, i did steal the checkpoints um, seat mast and seat at the moment uh, so i've got the carbon on there it's a seat mast but I needed a longer mast to fit the bike correctly, but also the seat I moved over for a little more comfortability when I'm doing longer rides. So the bike, bike is pretty amazing. I've really enjoyed it and um, definitely can't wait to put more miles on it. I've, I think I'm up to about 800 miles on it so far, and I'm trying to keep it down, but it's such a fun bike. The uh, big upgrade that I want to do to the bike, hopefully the next upgrade, uh, will be new wheels. This actually comes with the um, uh, Elite 35s on here. Originally, the Di2 or the um, Amada SL6 Pro of 2022 came with the Pro uh, 50s on the uh, as a rim set. This one they have just the Elite 35s to make sure we can keep it a nice budget uh, price with the uh, 105 Di2 on there now. So the wheels that I will upgrade to, hopefully in the future, will be the uh, AOS uh, Pro um, 51s. So I'll have a deeper dish on here instead of just this 35 series here, I'll have a 50 on here. Um, I was able to test with my um, uh, with Joe's 51 series that he had on his Madone for a day or two and what a difference it made. Um, you can definitely feel the rotational weight not slowing you down but also it was very much more stable uh, kind of in straight line um, and you could feel the weight kind of lifted off the bike uh, and the acceleration was great off the line as well but uh, definitely upgrading that to lighten the bike just a little bit but just actually a little more stability and uh, keep greater momentum as you're rolling or the wheels are rolling through and stuff so it's the next big upgrade i hope to do soon so to keep the bike as light as possible uh, and as aero as possible i've kind of opted for just our regular kind of seat bag here uh, that clamps underneath there and then just um two a couple little bit of tools back there so if we've got any repairs or anything we need to do 
I got it as little as possible in there just to keep the weight down and stuff. Uh, and then here you'll see I have a small head tube bag that I've done, uh, got through a, a friend, Kevin, um, that wasn't a fan of it, but it's working for me. I understand kind of why he was not wanting it because it does bump the knee if you ever go to stand up or power up. Uh, but I liked how slim it was and the shape of it was really nice for just keeping the bike pretty aero. Uh, so I'm enjoying that and haven't filled it up yet to do a big or long ride, but uh, soon I should have quite a bit of gels and candies and snacks inside there uh, when we go on our longer rides. Um, but other than that, it's been an amazing bike. Um, it's been quite a process to get this and slowly debate on which bike to get and how much to spend. Uh, this coming in at five grand is kind of a great bike, uh, the, like the best budget bike to go carbon wheels on a bike, but also electronic shifting and a full carbon bike. Uh, the big upgrades in the future uh, on other models of this would be like uh, an RSL stem, so a lighter stem, lighter carbon bars, things like that, and then the wheel upgrades as well. But um, it comes in as a pretty, pretty great budget bike for not killing yourself on budget, but also something that you can get in and have a lot of fun on and um, not have to worry about too much weight or spending more on top of it. It's a great get in kind of bike, but it's been uh, fun. It's been a lot of work. Uh, just celebrated two years at Trek, so it's kind of nice to have two of our bikes in the house that I super love and um, have enjoyed kind of uh, exploring all the different bikes, trying to figure out the, what bike next to get, and this is, I think, a great pick for me. But uh, again, thanks for watching. Hope you like these uh, videos. And uh, don't forget, like and subscribe, share with your peeps, and we'll talk to you then. Peace, y'all.